The Week 12 review episode of the Bears Talk Underground is brought to you by MyBookie. Sure, watching football is fun, but it's more entertaining when you have some action on the games. Guys, you've heard me talking about this for weeks, and some of you are still on the sidelines. Whether you're an expert or a rookie, you should be betting at MyBookie. If you're the kind of guy that likes to bet a little and win a lot, like playing the numbers on roulette, you can create a big parlay. Pick three teams to win, and if you hit all three, you could turn $100 into $600. There's so much to bet on. College basketball, football, NBA, NHL, custom props, even eSports, you name it, MyBookie has it. MyBookie is the one bet you know you'll be happy with all year. I recommend these guys because I really trust them. MyBookie has been in the business for years. They've got great online reviews, and their mobile site is so easy to use. Sign up this week, and MyBookie will give you a 50% deposit bonus to jumpstart your bankroll. It's a great way to bank even more money when you win. Also, make sure to follow at BetMyBookie on Twitter. They personally respond to every mention and DM, not to mention they've given away more than $10,000 in free money to their followers this football season. You'll be the first to know as soon as new odds and props are posted. Don't miss out on one of the best weeks to bet on sports all year. Log on to MyBookie right now and use the promo code BEARS25 to get the 50% deposit bonus. That's promo code BEARS25. MyBookie, you play, you win, you get paid. This week on the Bears Talk Underground. On Thursday, our beloved took part in the tradition that is playing the Lions in Detroit on Thanksgiving Day but they were doing so on the shortest turnaround in NFL history while looking to win their third division game in 11 days and take a five-game winning streak into a mini-bye before week 13. Could the Bears finish the job, or did they come up short? All of this plus Bear Up and Bear Down on the Week 12 review episode of The Bears Talk Underground. It's another victory episode, kitties. Five in a row for our beloved three victories in 11 days as the Bears took care of business in Detroit on Thanksgiving Day to beat the Lions to move to 8-3 and three on the year. What's going on, everybody? Larry D. back for the Week 12 review episode of the Bears Talk Underground, and we're going to do it all in one episode this time. No more breaking it up. Um, I apologize for the delay. Uh, yesterday on on Black Friday, I was not feeling very. I did a lot of sleeping yesterday. I had a hell of a sinus headache. I just couldn't couldn't play hurt yesterday, so I just let it go. Got all day today and sat and watched some boring college football because the rivalry games were were all blowouts today. It was kind of lame actually. So I was like, the hell with this. I'm gonna go ahead and get my show done because people are asking for it. Where the hell is it at? And uh, you know. I could um, use something to kind of lift my spirits because, like I said, the Michigan game with Ohio State was boring. Alabama, Auburn was boring because they were all blowouts. There was no competition, which is what we got plenty of on Thursday, like it or not, from the from the Lions, the Bears with another one-score victory over the Lions. Uh, you'll hear me talk about it a bit in the uh, knee-jerk reactions where it's like this game was was more typical of Bears-Lions games you know record book gets thrown out it's one score games comes down to the end somebody pulls out and you know uh, before this season it was always Detroit finding a way to uh, get one over on the Bears and walk away with victories instead this time it was our beloved that came out on top thanks to guys like Eddie Jackson and Kyle Fuller uh, in the fourth quarter so We'll go ahead and dive right in, get things started, because the the news that we pretty much knew but was not confirmed came through just before game time. And the fact that, um, you know, we we, we thought about uh, talking, we talked about uh, who our starting quarterback was going to be. But, you know, Nagy was kind of being iffy about it just in the in the in the in the vein of competition and and making sure that uh, Patricia has to practice for both our quarterbacks instead of just uh, one or the other. But we got the news. Not the greatest news, but in the end, we knew we'd be okay. Knee-jerk reaction. Bears-Lions on Thanksgiving Day. Pre-game, and it is official. Mitch Trubisky is out for this week's game against the Detroit Lions uh, on Thanksgiving Day. Chase Daniel gets the start. 
Uh, when the inactives came out, I was hoping to see, uh, or hoping not to see, actually, uh, Javon Wims uh, on that since he was since he had such a great rapport with Chase Daniel during the preseason. But unfortunately, he is on the inactive list along with Trubisky, along with Adam Shaheen and Aaron Lynch. So none of them playing uh, today. But Kevin White is active today. So maybe some of the fireworks that they had in the Kansas City game during the dress rehearsal will reignite here uh, in Detroit. Not saying that obviously the Bears uh, don't have any other options. They have plenty of other options, but they chose Kevin White over Javon Wims to play today, so we'll see how that all works out. Uh, kickoff is going to be any minute now, and hopefully the Bear defense is still hungry after feasting on Vikings. is ready for a little lion leg or something like that uh, to get us another victory uh, on Thanksgiving Day. And sure enough, right off the bat in that first quarter, both defenses uh, showed up to uh, showed up to play. So it wasn't like the first time around at all where the Bears, you know, easily put their uh, their first couple of drives in the end zone, putting points on the board and, and getting ourselves uh, an early lead. Uh, we were pretty much determined from the outset to, to at least make it interesting uh, for the fans at home. And it was a another national TV audience. It was the only game on uh, at the time. And, uh, you know, both defenses come out to play. Both offenses kind of stagnant. Uh, you'll hear me mention this later. Uh, it, it, it's almost like they didn't have enough time to prepare for this game. So, I mean, it's crazy to think that that could be possible and that it would translate onto the field. But sure enough, both teams came out a little bit groggy and uh, the first quarter was without any kind of uh, significant fireworks. <laughs> Knee-jerk reaction in the first quarter, the Bears and the Lions on Thanksgiving Day. And um, it's about what you'd expect from two teams that just played three days ago. So uh, it hasn't been very pretty. Uh, it's been a defensive-dominated game thus far. Uh, that's pretty much it, you know. The, the they've traded they traded three three and outs to get started. Uh, Detroit moved the chains a couple of times on the second drive, but stalled out um, and had to punt again. Um, Chase Daniel has been sacked once already in the pocket because he's not Mitch Trubisky. That's the one huge difference between the two quarterbacks. And I don't really know what we're trying to do on offense. I do know that we're not running the ball. The last play of the first quarter was Taquan Mazel Got a decent run, the best run of the day. I think he got about seven yards uh, on the play. But otherwise, it's two stagnant offenses against the defenses who are controlling the football game right now. So it's a scoreless tie, 0-0 at the end of one. And hopefully... As the as these teams get warmed up and such, we'll see a bit more fireworks because it was a pretty boring uh, first quarter, but thankfully it was over quickly. So here we go. Start of the second quarter, the Bears with the football. It's about second and three, and we'll see how it goes from here. And the theme would repeat itself, the, the that uh, that of us not running uh, the football. Um, well, uh, you know, Tariq Cohen was the leading rusher in the football game, for the Bears anyway, with 14 yards. Um, Jordan Howard, apparently for, for this season anyway, his magic number with the Lions is 1.9 because he had seven carries for 13 yards, good for 1.9 yards a carry uh, again. But, you know, he had seven carries. I think Tari Tariq Cohen had six or seven. And, and the thing about those, those 14 yards that Cohen rushed for, you'll hear me talk about it during the fourth quarter in your jerk reaction. He got 10 of those on one carry at the end of the football game. They were the most important 10 yards on the ground all day long uh, for the Bears, but that was the, the big rush that they got. Crazy that for a team that struggled to run the football throughout the entire football game, it was a running play on third and nine that sealed the deal uh, for our beloved. It was kind of crazy. But again, not, looking, not going for the run with, with Jordan Howard. Um, it didn't seem like whatever was working against Minnesota that they were even trying uh, to do that very much they pretty much put the football in chase daniel's hands a a, a great show of confidence uh, for our backup quarterback but you know you you'd figure that that we would want to try to kind of ease him into the game a bit more than we did and instead you know just you know what the hell with it here you take the ball we're going to move the chains uh through the through the air and it wasn't the prettiest game um offensively for either team quite frankly but that's how we uh we went out and and played it 
uh, on Thursday, and, and thankfully for us it, it worked out. But uh, in the first quarter, very little going on. Uh, the defenses were, were controlling the tempo uh, of the football game. The offenses were kicking it back and forth, maybe a first down here, there, that kind of thing. Second quarter, things got a bit exciting right off the bat, and unfortunately it went, uh, it went against us. <laughs> Knee-jerk reaction to the second quarter of the uh, Bears and Lions, and uh, not a very exciting game. It's almost as if these teams didn't have enough time to get ready. You know, like the window between one game and the next was too small. Crazy, right? Anyway, second quarter was a bit more exciting than the first, but honestly not much. Uh, It's been a very blah game so far in the first half. Uh, The Lions actually struck first um, off of uh, basically like I think the first play of the second quarter. Uh, Chase Daniel, a completion to Trey Burton, and it was a very bang bang. I didn't, I didn't, didn't really react to the play when it happened, but they say that Trey Burton caught the ball, got both feet down, and was trying to make a football move when the ball was knocked out of his hands. It was ruled a fumble. Detroit had the ball on a short field and was able to put that into the end zone on a four-yard Legarrette Blunt uh, touchdown run, and that seven-nothing lead for the Lions. They put up a stat saying that's the first time the Bears have trailed in the last five games, which I believe is the New England game. So we haven't trailed in a game since we played New England. Um, The Bears came back uh, on the very next drive, and a missed opportunity on that drive. Um, We were goal to go, I believe, or at least we were in the red zone on third down. uh, Pass play to Tariq Cohen. It just just passed the short little man's fingertips. Otherwise, he was wide open. It should have been a touchdown. Settled for a 40-yard Cody Parkey field goal. And then the Bears come back and essentially run the two-minute drill uh, on the Lions with about three minutes to go. Uh, Chase Daniel throwing the football very well uh, so far today, not making any any shaky throws or bad throws or anything like that. Honestly, just uh, overextending the fingertips of Tariq Cohen is the only quote-unquote really bad throw that he's made uh, so far uh, today. He's done very well. Allen Robinson's made a couple of big catches. Uh, Taylor Gabriel, Trey Burton uh, getting involved uh, as well. Anthony Miller had a nice Nice catch on the drive. Uh, capped off the, the drive with a touchdown to Taquan Mizell. For some reason, he is on the field and playing instead of Howard or Cohen on that play and uh, catches the ball for a touchdown. The Bears went for two and didn't get it. So we're up 9-7 at the half. So the, the result of last time is pretty much the same. Detroit's only got seven points at halftime. They're not really getting much going on offense, but defensively they're playing much better, and the Bears are, are, are they, they, they appear that they've got something going now. They scored on their last two drives, the field goal and the touchdown, and we start with the ball to kick off the second half. So once that gets started, I think we'll see where the Bears are. Are we in a rhythm now, or did halftime stop it? So when we start the second half, the Bears will start with the football and a 9-7 to lead. So Chase Daniel was able to get a bit more going offensively in the, in the second quarter. We started moving the chains a bit more. He did just overthrow uh, Tariq Cohen. If Tariq Cohen was a regular-sized human being, he comes down with that catch and scores the touchdown. But he's still our, our, our little human joystick, so he didn't quite have the length to, to come down with it. They made up for it, though, in, in the fourth quarter. We'll get to that a little bit uh, uh, later on. Um, the more I see how Matt Nagy and, um, and the offense in, is using um, Jordan Howard, the more I believe that Jordan Howard will probably not be on this team again next year. Uh, I think that the Bears will trade Jordan Howard during the offseason and and try to find more of a Kareem Hunt type player. Uh, I mean, you know, for lack of a better uh, comparison, a Matt Forte, as far as we know, we Bear fans uh, understand. A guy that can run and catch the ball out of the backfield like Forte did for so many years uh, when he was in Chicago. You know, obviously being the main back is not what Tariq Cohen is is going to be uh, good at. 
You know, he's not going to be a 25 to 30 carry a game guy. And the Bears need somebody like that. It's we're, we're 11 games into the season. Jordan Howard is barely over 500 yards for the year. So unless he has some kind of insane explosion over the next five games, he's going to fall short of a thousand yards. And it, I don't really have an explanation as to why that is. We just don't appear uh, to be using him or using him the way that John Fox and Dole Loggins did. I mean, who, who would say that, uh, you know, after everything that's happened positive for the Bears this year, the one thing that wouldn't work was the only thing that worked for us last year on the offensive side, that Jordan Howard would somehow become a weakness uh, on this football team. And I'm not putting it all on Jordan Howard. There's a lot to be said for how they're using him. And we've said many, many times that that Jordan Howard is a is a multiple kind of running back where the more carries you give him, the better he gets. We saw it happen so many times last year, especially when our our you know our opponents knew we had no one, no one for Mitch Trubisky to throw the football to if it wasn't Cohen coming out of the backfield. We had no one for for Mitch to throw the football to. So they would just load up the box and dare us to throw the ball and we would sit there and try to run it and keep giving the football to Jordan Howard and he produced 1100 yards rushing last year doing that. In this season, somehow we we come away like, "Oh, he did get 14 carries, but he got two here, two there, two here, two there." They were so spread out. They didn't really have any kind of significance for Jordan. He wasn't really able to get anything going. That's been the tail of the tape all season long uh, for Jordan Howard running the uh, running the football. So it's like all that stuff was like none of us wanted to hear about the Bears trading away Jordan Howard. You know, over during this past off season, like even when it could have gotten us Jarvis Landry in that one trade that everybody was talking about, the Bears trade. Uh, the eighth pick and and Jordan Howard to the Dolphins for Jarvis Landry and number 11. You know, it's like, well, I love that we're only moving down three spots. I love that we're getting a, a number one receiver, but giving up Jordan Howard's not worth it. It's a deal I would take now, to be honest with you. For And not because I don't want Jordan Howard on the team. I want to make that very clear. I don't want Jordan Howard to go. I think Jordan Howard is one of the most underrated running backs in football. He's just not being used properly. And, and all those rumors and rumblings about Howard not fitting into Matt Nagy's system, we've got almost three-quarters of a season proof that that's, that's true. I mean, how, how else can you explain the Bears underutilizing a guy like Jordan Howard? Because he doesn't fit into what Matt Nagy wants to do. He's putting Taquan Mazel of all people, and um, Tariq Cohen out there before he's putting uh, Jordan Howard out there. You know, as much as I hate to say it, I think Jordan Howard's days in Chicago uh, are numbered. When this season is over, they're probably going to look uh, to move him and uh, see if they can't, uh, you know, either trade or sign uh, or somebody somebody that will fit the system better than Jordan Howard does. Somebody who is a more complete back. I mean, granted, I think Jordan Howard is more complete than we've allowed him to be. Uh, he he had a chance to catch a pass, but Chase, uh, Chase Daniel got hit. Uh, on the delivery therefore the ball wasn't in the right placement it's just been an unlucky year uh, for Howard I would say more than anything because we've seen what he's capable of we just haven't been able to see him do it uh, in this offense We're, we're having too much success everywhere else and we don't really need it but we know we need to run the football better he's our number one back and it's it's um it's very much like when when uh you know Loggins and Fox were running the running the offense where it's like, okay, when Jordan Howard is out there, they're running the ball. When Tariq Cohen is out there, they're most likely passing uh, the ball. And we need somebody in in Matt Nagy's offense where they're not going to be able to tell one way or the other, kind of like when we had Matt Forte uh, on the team. As much as I hate to say it, guys, that's my bold prediction for the offseason, even though we got – a long way to go before we finally hit the offseason, or at least a little bit longer than we usually have uh, these last several years. My big prediction for the offseason is that the Bears are going to move Jordan Howard uh, during the offseason. We're either going to trade him away uh, or let him go something. I don't know, because he's going to be going into the final year of his rookie contract, or at the very least, we're going to find his replacement uh, during the offseason, somebody who fits the offense better than Jordan Howard and then try to trade him or something like that. I don't know. I just think that, unfortunately, his days as a Bear 
uh, are numbered and not really his fault at all either. So, yeah. So kind of bummed about that, to be honest with you. But it's looking more and more like that's the that's the reality of what's going on with Jordan Howard and, and the running game is that he's he doesn't really fit what Matt Nagy is trying to do uh, on the offensive side. And we're, we're, we're not really using him the way that we should. We're still trying to get him to the outside instead of running him between the tackles. And then we're, we're also just not running him enough to allow him to get going. You know, I guess Nagy just doesn't have the uh, patience for it. He's more like um, Mike Martz uh, in that instance. Well, we ran the ball on first down and we only got two yards. So screw it. Let's throw it for the rest of the football game uh, kind of thing. So, you know, but unfortunately for Howard, He's not our key uh, receiver coming out of the backfield. That's Tariq Cohen uh, right now. And apparently Taquan Mazel is a better receiver uh, coming out of the backfield because he was on the field uh, in those situations and caught a touchdown pass uh, on Thursday against the Lions. So I really do think, unfortunately, as much as, uh, you know, and you've, I've seen you guys you know tweeting at me about how frustrated you are with Jordan Howard and how he's being used. It kind of puts a bittersweet t- uh, taste on just about every victory we have because Jordan Howard hasn't had that big 100-yard game. I don't think he's had one. All, he hasn't had one 100-yard game uh, all season uh, this year. He hasn't had that game where he's taken over uh, the football game and, and you know, it, it all went through him. He's had the games where he's scored multiple touchdowns. He had two uh, in the Buffalo game. He had that really great run where he plowed his defender over to score the second touchdown and, and all that kind of stuff, but... You know, I think Mag- Nagy wants more, and uh, he'll probably be looking elsewhere to find it. Uh, a more complete guy, a more Kareem Hunt slash Matt Forte uh, kind of running back coming out of the backfield, someone who can do more. And then, you know, probably use Cohen as more the Tyreek Hill, put him in the slot, you know, and have him mix things up in the backfield uh, kind of thing. So um, that's kind of what I foresee happening this offseason when it, when it relates to Jordan Howard because we're just not we're just not using him a we're not using him at all pretty much at all and when we are um, you know pretty much defenses can see what's coming and they load the box and and he's ineffective so frustrating to think uh, frustrating to see frustrating to talk about but probably the reality of what's going down Um, but more on the uh, the second quarter here that Trey Burton thing like I said I had no reaction to it when it happened because I thought it was an incomplete pass and I thought, you know, they're just running it out, but they're going to come back and say, oh, that was incomplete. And, you know, it, it was all that kind of stuff. And it, it went against us. I couldn't believe it, but it did. And I kind of had a bad feeling about where this game might go on that LeGarrette Blunt run because <laughs> LeGarrette Blunt ran through a tackle of Adrian Amos. And I, and I kind of got flashbacks from the Miami game where we lost that one because we couldn't tackle all of a sudden you know, being worn out and all that kind of stuff. And uh, for the first time in a long time, the Bears lost the time of possession battle uh, in a game. I think it's been weeks since that's happened uh, to us, but we lost the time of possession battle against Detroit uh, by a handful of minutes at least in this game. And I was like, oh, the short, you know, even shorter window than uh, Detroit had traveling on the road so we lost some preparation time there guys banged up from a physical game with minnesota blah 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 and we're missing tackles now so i was like okay well this one might get might get ugly uh for us if that continues to happen thankfully it didn't uh that was just a an anomaly uh one other play eddie jackson whiffed on a tackle on a, on a screen play that actually broke for big yardage uh for the lions but other than that we we're pretty much on the ball when it came to tackling uh, on Thursday so we went into the half with the lead the Bears came back and, and, and retook the lead uh, that missed two-point conversion turned out to be important points uh, in this football game and um, you know because that extra point we're sitting at 16-16 in the fourth quarter spoiler alert and uh, it would have been 17-16 who knows how things you know maybe translate a little bit differently in the football game that way but uh, nonetheless we go into the third quarter, we start with the football, we try to see what's going on, but we come out flat in the third quarter as well, not really doing much of anything on offense, and when we head into the fourth quarter, for the first time in a long time, it's the Bears that are behind instead of protecting their lead. Knee-jerk reaction to the third quarter, the Bears and the Lions, and... Um 
teams are out there, uh, you know, banging with each other, that's for sure. A uh, couple of busted coverages on defense for the Bears results in the Lions getting the football down the field on two big plays and finishing it off with another LeGarrette Blunt touchdown run. However, they go for two and they don't make it, so it's 13-9 to right now. Trey Burton is uh, almost single-handedly killing the Bears uh, in the third quarter, especially. Uh, you had the fumble at the start of the second quarter that resulted in the first Detroit touchdown. And now uh, Trey Burton was called uh, or dropped a wide-open pass on... It was second down. It was like second and eight, but it would have been a first down had he caught the ball. And then um, on the last bear drive, uh, Chase Daniel scrambles for a first down, but it gets called back. It was like it was third and one. Chase Daniel ran for a first down, but Trey Burton got called for holding, so it became third and 11, and I believe Daniel got sacked on the play or something like that. Uh, nonetheless, it killed the drive. So any momentum the Bears tried to put together in the third quarter, Trey Burton was was uh, responsible for having, you know, for, for, for killing it for the most part. However, we do have the football um, at the end of the third quarter, starting in the fourth. We are now in Detroit Lion territory. It's only 13-9, to nine, and uh, this is typical Bears-Lions. I mean, we talked about it before the first game. The one thing that makes this, like, the truest rivalry in the NFC North is that you can throw the record books out. The games are always close. It's always a one-score game. It always comes down to the wire and looks like that's exactly what's going to happen here. So the Bears are down four, but they're moving the football. And let's see if the defense can step up afterwards and uh, hold the Lions and hang on to the, to the lead should we be lucky enough to get it. <laughs> We were lucky enough to get it, but uh, before we get to that, uh, Trey Burton did not have a good uh, second, third quarter uh, on Thursday. You know, starting with the fumble at the start of the the second quarter. You know, I don't really put that on him. I just that was a good defensive play. It was the peanut punch. There's uh, that's almost indefensible. The peanut punch. We all know. We watched it happen for years uh, when he was here with us in in Chicago. Uh, but the that dropping that pass. He took his eyes off the ball. It would have been a first down. There was nothing but green grass uh, in front of him. He would have uh, been able to move the chains and extend the drive, but that fell short. And then the Chase Daniel scramble, getting the one yard on third and one, but uh, you know Burton decided to grab a hold of a linebacker that came across his face, would not have been able to make the play. All he had to do was stand there and, and get in his way, and the, the linebacker doesn't make the play. Instead, Burton puts hands on him and holds him. That brings it back to third and 11, kills the drive again. So, I mean, he was not having a good day. Forcing the turnover, dropping the pass, the holding penalty. Not a good afternoon uh, for Trey Burton. But we come into the fourth quarter. We're down 13-9. to nine. It's, uh, you know, a one-score game and, you know, a very, very manageable, uh, you know, deficit for the Bears to get through. On the road where they don't play their best football, but that turned out not to be that big a deal. As we go into the two-minute warning, things have shifted. You know, the, the Bears have retaken the lead, and but they're on their heels. Detroit has the football. They're, they're, they're driving the football down the field, trying to tie up the game and possibly either win it or send it to overtime. But here we are, two-minute warning, and the stakes have been raised. Knee-jerk reaction, Bears and Lions, Thanksgiving Day. Two-minute warning in the fourth quarter. God bless Eddie Jackson, who was able to get a pick six that give the Bears the lead they have right now, 23-16. to 16. Um, The Bears added a touchdown, and it's escaping me right now, three Cohen. Tariq Cohen with a touchdown catch to give the Bears a 16-13 to 13 lead. The Lions were able to take it back and get a field goal to tie it. And then the Bears giving the ball back to the uh, Lions. Eddie Jackson with the pick six puts the Bears up 23-16. to 16. A pretty sweet touchdown celebration on top of that as well. I really dug it. But uh, here we are in the two-minute warning. The Lions having some success running the football. I think the defense is just a bit tired. The Lions have held on to the ball quite a bit uh, today. So um, that might be playing a factor here into it. But as we go into the two-minute warning, the Lions are inside the red zone. The Bears protecting a 23-16 lead, looking to keep the Lions out of the end zone. 
and uh, see where it goes from here. It's been a fun game since a very slow start. The first two quarters not very eventful. The third quarter not so much either, but here we are with the fireworks in the fourth quarter, seeing if the Bears can hang on to this victory and uh, get into that mini bye with, uh, with a four-game win, four win streak. <laughs> My math was off. We were already on a four-game win streak. We were looking for number five is what we were looking for. But like I said, some finally some fireworks there uh, in the fourth quarter with the Bears able to take the lead pretty much on the same play that they missed the touchdown on earlier in the football game, the one that was just a little too far out on Tariq Cohen, and we had to settle for the field goal in the second quarter. It was a similar play. I don't think it was the same one, but a similar play, a similar route uh, for Tariq Cohen had him open in the same way. Uh, on you know, I mean, he had two, three steps on his defender, but a perfect throw from Chase Daniel this time around. We we're able to haul it in uh, for the touchdown, and it's up. Uh, we're at sixteen to nine, or sixteen to thirteen, actually. The Lions add the field goal. We end up giving the football back, as you heard me say, and then it was the prettiest touchdown, the prettiest pick six I've seen in a while, and it was. It couldn't have been more perfect than it was because when we went back. And we saw the uh, the replay. Tony Romo, who is uh, slowly but surely becoming my favorite analyst on television right now, and um, I'm excited that CBS is doing the Super Bowl uh, this year. I'd like to see what he's going to do there. But anyway, um, he said with the the Bears were blitzing Stafford on that particular play, and they were sending I think both inside linebackers. So Eddie Jackson's responsibility was the tight end. That's exactly where. Um, Stafford went with the football. He went to his tight end, and Eddie Jackson saw saw the play breaking. You see him kick it into high gear, and in perfect stride, he got there at just the perfect moment. Perfect moment, caught it in stride, boom. He runs right through the pass, catches it into the end zone, untouched uh, for the touchdown, and then... <laughs> led the uh, defense in another awesome touchdown celebration where he had him doing the uh, had him doing the up downs and calisthenics to the right to the left up and then down and then they all ran back to the uh, to the sidelines those touchdown celebrations are getting pretty good uh, for the Bears and uh, that one was pretty good the the one in the the one that we're going to talk about here in a minute was even better but um, that's how it all went down. So here we are in the second quarter. We've got this lead now. We, we, we've ta- retaken control of the game, and it's on Detroit to try to come back and, and send the game to overtime or have them score so they can try to go ahead and win it on Thanksgiving in front of this national TV crowd. But fortunately for us, the Bears are a different team this year. We're not open, you know, we're not uh, susceptible to those kind of scenarios going against us, at least not in 2018. And we were able to come out triumphant and uh, put the dagger in Detroit, complete the first season sweep of the Lions since 2012, get our fifth victory, and go into their, our little mini buy with a, a nice little bit of momentum. Knee jerk reaction Bears and the Lions in the fourth quarter. And we pulled it off. We did it again. We're 3-0 and in three divisional games inside of 11 days. The Bears walk away with a 23-16 victory over the Lions. Kyle Fuller with an interception in the end zone to stop the, uh, the, the threat from Detroit uh, in the red zone there towards the end. And then just a huge play. The Bears trying to run the ball, but Detroit had all three timeouts. First and second down, Jordan Howard barely gets back to the line of scrimmage. Third and nine. Tariq Cohen takes it around the corner. Big block from James Daniels. Gets the first down on third and nine to seal the victory. That's it. Bears win five five straight wins for the Bears. It's unbelievable. We protect the lead. We're eight and three. Mitch should be healthy and ready to go for the Giants in 10 days. We're on a mini bye. Happy Thanksgiving, baby. We did it. Just just a little excited there. Just a little bit. You know, there's so many lean years, guys. I mean, 2010 was our last playoff season. 2011, what a what a ball breaker that year was to to have a, a five-game winning streak in the middle of the season going into a stretch of the year where we're playing 
the worst division in football back to back to back to back four straight games against the AFC West in a year where their champion was eight and eight and you know probably didn't deserve to be in the playoffs but was there by default and Jay Cutler gets hurt and basically our offense went with him and so did the season we lost five straight after uh and Jay got hurt in that San Diego game and the, our season goes down the tubes there 2012 we get off to a seven and one start and then we go three and five down the way uh finish 10 and six don't make the playoffs lovey gets fired and then you've got the last five seasons of just uh, two years of tressman where we had all offense and no defense in 2014 the inmates are running the asylum we got to throw him and emory out on the street we bring in john fox a rookie uh, uh gm and we struggle for three seasons but it was a productive struggle as as we're finding out now because all the pieces that are working for the bears right now were being collected in those three years uh under john fox unfortunately for him he did not get the results to make it look like he should be the guy to lead the bears uh going forward we went out and got the guy that that needs to be uh leading us but um a lot of lean years that's why i was kind of just giddy over the fact We've won five straight games. We're, we're on, a, on a huge trajectory right now to make the playoffs. And now we're getting some talk about, you know, the Rams and the Saints are one and two in the NFC right now. We get to prove the theory against the Rams in a couple of weeks to see if we are good enough to beat them. But it's like, you know, are the Bears the anti-Saints? You know, can, is the defense good enough to slow the Saints down? Because the Rams tried to outscore the Saints and couldn't because they're off their defense is atrocious. Can the Bears slow down the Saints and the Rams enough to be the team uh, in the NFC? That's a real question. It's, and it's a valid question, actually. You know, it's not just something to, to create discussion. That the Bears defense is going to have something to say about how things go in the NFC this year. One way or the other, I believe that. So it's uh, it's very exciting to watch our beloved going out there and winning games like this where, you know, the shortest turnaround in NFL history between games, less than 85 hours between the gun going off in, in, C, in, uh, in against Minnesota on Sunday to the time the opening kickoff started between the Bears and the Lions on Thursday morning. So, I mean, it was the shortest window, and the Bears answered the call. Three straight division wins. And we've gotten more division wins in the last 11 days, than we, or as, as many, I should say. We got as many division wins in the last 11 days than John Fox had in three full seasons as head coach of the Bears. He had one victory each against Green Bay, Detroit, and Minnesota in his three seasons, zero last year. He had zero victories <laughs> against, the, against the NFC North last year. That's why he's out on his ass. Um, that's why he's an analyst watching football as opposed to actually coaching it uh, this year. But there you have it, guys. You know, we come through, we win the game. We're the team that's making the plays at the end to seal victories and put games away. Kyle Fuller with a big interception at the end and the best celebra- t- best touchdown celebration of the year. Uh, the, <laughs> the defense turned itself into the Motown review like the Temptations out there, shucking and jiving from one side back to the other while Prince of Mukamura is singing lead on the whole thing. It's fantastic. It also sparked a whole bunch of... Um, I forget what the hashtag is on Twitter, but Spice Adams, Anthony Adams started the Bears Sing Anything or something like that. The music that they're playing underneath, you know, what song are the Bears singing when they're out there, you know, doing their little Motown uh, dance and everything. There have been so many different songs that have been laid over it uh, since Thursday afternoon when when uh, when Spice Adams brought that out there. So uh, that was uh, really entertaining and, and a lot of fun to see that celebration. Uh, that was really cool. So. It's, it's great to see our guys having fun and winning uh, out there. And, um, you know, you wouldn't see a team, a team putting together a celebration like that out there if they didn't think they were going to be able to use it. You know what I mean? So they're out there having fun, and, and it's really, really a great thing uh, uh, to see. This team has personality, and, uh, you know, they're, they're showing it each and every week with these, these touchdown celebrations. And, uh, you know, it's it's a next man up kind of football team. It's and it, it's good to see. You know, Chase Daniel comes out. He doesn't have the same traits and, and strengths as as Trubisky, but he was accurate. Twenty seven of thirty seven, uh, two hundred thirty yards, two touchdowns, no interceptions, which was huge uh, in this football game. 
and uh, you know he gets the job done. You know, rather rather well in, in this football game. <laughs> May have just played himself off the team, you know, because somebody might be interested in trying to steal him uh, from the Bears. Uh, you know, for 2019, we'll have to wait and see on that. But um, you know, nonetheless, he performed well. Um, we were able to spread the football around and and do just enough to get the victory um, on Thursday against the uh, against the Lions. You know, shortest week ever between games. Our beloved were able to pull it out and come away with their fifth straight win, their third straight division win, and um, you know we get a little bit of rest and uh, to get ready to go on the road again to take on the Giants before the big Sunday night showdown against the Rams on Sunday night football. So. A big game uh, coming ahead against the Giants because we can't get caught looking ahead. You know, we can't do that. Not now. And, um, you know, if we have any any inkling about trying to get a bye in the NFC playoffs, we can't look past the Giants and get caught with our pants down, you know, and, and, and lose a game that we should easily win uh, next Sunday against the Giants. So we, we can't do that. We have to be smart. We have to, you know, keep focus and and play this game like it is the Rams game and uh you know we're on the road where we don't play very well uh this year or the games are a little bit more exciting than we'd like for them to be uh, on the road and uh, we need to handle this Giants team and then get ready for the Rams uh on Sunday night so that will do it for the week 12 review and all the knee-jerk reactions what do you say we go ahead and close out the show with everybody's favorite segment bear up bear down Remember, guys, use the promo code BEARS25 at MyBookie and you'll get a 50% deposit bonus. It's a great way to pad the bankroll and help you even win even more money. That's promo code BEARS25. You go to MyBookie and get signed up. Mobile site is easy to use. That's how I signed up for the Bears and uh, Lions bet. Uh, they did cover the spread, so I won, and that's uh, awesome. So uh, made a little extra cash, and I hope that some of you guys did too uh, as well. Take advantage of that uh, Turkey Day free play that they had uh, this past Thursday for the Bears and uh, Lions game. So bear up and bear down for the Week 12 review, and uh, let's see. Let's go with the bear downs first. Um I really only had one person that, that stood out that needed to be on the list. And uh, we talked about him earlier, Trey Burton. You know, you had the fumble in the second quarter, that drop pass in the third quarter that would have extended the drive. And then again, later on, killing another drive with a holding penalty. You know, he didn't have a bad game or anything like that. He just didn't really, he didn't have a good day. That's for sure. And he was really the only person that uh, that I saw that deserved to be quote unquote deserved to be uh, on the bear up bear or excuse me on the bear down uh, side of things. The only other candidate I could think of is maybe maybe Matt Nagy for his use of Jordan Howard, but I'm so sick of talking about it. It's just it is what it is at this point. You know you can't blame Nagy. I mean to his credit, he comes into every press conference saying after the game we need to run the ball better. We do need to run the ball better. So he knows. He, it's, he's not blind to it like Mike Martz saying like, well, we ran the ball six times. What more do you want? We didn't, it didn't go well, so I just went to something else. Matt Nagy knows as we get into the nuts and bolts of the season here, as this, the year starts to wind down, as, as the quote-unquote bear weather becomes more and more prevalent, um, running the football is going to be far more important, especially a couple of weeks from now in that battle that we're expecting with the Rams. We're going to want to run the football against the Rams to keep the ball out of their hands as much as humanly possible that night. Use the weather to our advantage. Use the conditions to our advantage. Use Jordan Howard to our advantage and, and run the football down the Rams' throat. Monopolize as much of that clock as humanly possible to keep it out of Jared Goff's hands. Keep it away from Todd Gurley and Robert Woods and uh, everybody else on that offensive side of the ball. Uh, for the Rams so yeah also if we're running the ball I think maybe Aaron Donald isn't as dangerous <laughs> as he would be if we're trying to throw it all the time uh, to catch up so you know uh, Nagy doesn't make the list maybe he's more of an honorable mention but like I said at this point 
it is what it is with the running game and 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 how that's all being used. So, what what are you going to do with it? So, on the bear up side, obviously Chase Daniel, he gets the bear up. You know, we mentioned his stats: twenty seven to thirty seven, two hundred thirty yards, two inter- two touchdowns, zero interceptions, a one hundred six quarterback rating for the game. Uh, Tariq Cohen, that big run on third down that sealed the game, the touchdown catch that he did get. The being wide open on the touchdown reception that he didn't uh, end up getting, but you know he's one of the important cogs in our offense, and uh, he was there to make some impact plays on on Thursday. Uh, Kyle Fuller, the interception to to seal up the game, bear up on that, and obviously Eddie Jackson with the dagger for the Lions that uh, that interception. Like I said, he played that absolutely perfectly he was he was running full board to get over to the guy that he was supposed to be covering he was on the opposite side of the field he was on the left side on the on the right side of the Lions formation left side of the defensive formation had to run across the field and was just running at the most perfect clip that when Stafford delivered the football Eddie Jackson just ran right through like that was like that was the design play Eddie Jackson was the intended receiver on that, came down with the football, runs it into the end zone for the touchdown. And um, my final bear up for this week to whoever, whoever is the Bears choreographer, (laughs) who is whoever is putting these dances together. The Eddie Jackson celebration, even going back to last week with the with the symphony or or whatever it was uh, this week with the calisthenics. And then, of course, you got, I mean, there are guys coming off the sidelines to be part of these touchdown celebrations uh, for the Bears. <laughs> you know, Deion Bush wasn't on the field when, um, when Kyle Fuller caught the interception, but he runs onto the field, to, you know, to be a part of that Motown review the Bears were doing in, th- in the end zone. So whoever's choreographing, uh, being whoever the choreographer for the Bears and their touchdown celebrations are, bear up to you guys. You know, whether it's one person or a group of guys or whatever, just putting those ideas together. You guys are doing it, you know, all the way from Anthony Miller's, you know, row, row, row your boats impression uh, last week to, you know, to the Motown review in the end zone in Detroit. That was great. So those uh, those are fun. It's like (laughs) I look forward to those more than I do the Bears scoring touchdowns, which is crazy. So there you go. There you have it, folks. The week 12 review for the Bears talk underground going to be going to take a little break, going to enjoy a little mini buy of my own. So we'll be back on Thursday. Uh, Ryan Dunleavy from uh, NJ.com and the um, the Giants podcast that is eluding me right at the moment, the name of it. But the same guy that we had on earlier in the year to uh, preview the Giants uh, during the opponent previews. He will be back to help us preview Bears Giants for week number 13. So until then, my name is Larry D and this has been the Bears Talk Underground.